Looking at fire history here at the seashore, we've tried to figure out what happened here historically. That's what I mean by fire history, is how often do fires occur typically in the past? How large were they? Um, and how did they affect the plant communities that they were burning in? Understanding fire history is a very complicated thing. You're looking at a landscape and you're trying to picture what normally would happen here in terms of fire. Plant communities and the landscape we're looking at today is not the same as what it was a couple hundred years ago. And you're given some clues. And a couple of clues you can look at are fire rings, which are the, literally the rings of a tree that have fire scars in them. And those can help you figure out when a fire occurred historically. Another thing that you can do is look at sediment cores, and those are actually cores taken of soil. And within that core, you're finding pieces of charcoal at various depths. And some of these cores you can actually date back up to 7,000 years. Fire is a management tool uh, in any conservation area. What we're doing here is looking at where fire naturally occurs in the system. So one concept is how do we reintroduce fire to systems that really need it as part of their community cycle. The other aspect that we're working on at the seashore is using fire as a tool to manage exotic plant species. We've been excluding fire over the last, say, 50 to 100 years. There is a plant in that community that's actually becoming quite rare. It's the marine manzanita. Manzanita seeds to require heat in order to germinate. And so if you exclude fire from an area, the seeds are not able to germinate. And by applying fire, you stimulate that species to actually regenerate. One of the projects here at the seashore is at a location called the Estero. There we've been working on managing an exotic plant called Scotch brooms. Fire so far seems like it could be a valuable tool in managing broom here at the seashore. In establishing the perimeter of a prescribed burn unit, we can decide what boundaries the perimeter of the burn area is. So, for instance, if we have a road or a stream bank, we try to find natural barriers. We can stop it without actually um, having to put it out like a wildfire. But there will probably be areas where you do not have those natural barriers. In those situations, we have to construct our own barriers. And that may be either through a technique we call wet lining. And that involves putting a wet water line down around the perimeter of the fire. Or by a technique we call black lining. And black lining is getting on the very perimeter edge of the unit and lighting 15 feet inside the perimeter of the burn unit. That secures the perimeter in developing a prescription, we look at a range of air temperatures, wind speeds, relative humidities, cloud cover, vegetation moisture. Once we've established this range, we can narrow in on what specific parameters we want to use. Here at Point Reyes, our fire management program has three objectives. The first is to maintain native communities. The second is to manage exotic plants. And the third is to manage hazardous fuels. We've been using fire here since the 1970s. And the question is, are we effective? Are we actually accomplishing what we're trying to do? Uh, in terms of managing exotic plant species, we have reduced scotch broom by about 84%, which has met our objectives that we set in, out initially. Fire effects monitoring in the Park Service is one great tool to look at monitoring sites over time to figure out if we're meeting our objectives. The plots are installed prior to burning an area, and they're red in terms of what species occur there and what's their percent cover. The plots are red prior to the fire, immediately after the fire, and at years 1, 2, 5, and 10 following the fire. This data has been extremely valuable in quantifying whether or not we're actually reducing the exotic plant scotch broom in the areas where we are applying fire. 
Many years ago, the role of land managers in fire was one of suppression and putting fires out. It wasn't until we realized that fire played a very important role in the ecology of forests and wildlands. At that point, there was a shift in thinking, and what was once fire control turned into fire management. The term fire management includes using fire to reduce fuel loading in the forests, to help stimulate native plants and reduce noxious and invasive weeds. We have come almost full circle from the days of putting fires out to starting fires for the benefit of the ecology of our wildlands.